Where I could find Dalton Incorporated? Room 502. Push door on your left. Well, thank you. These are the brownies from the Valley Heights School. The girls are here to visit the factory, Mr. Franz. Yes, Mr. Franz. He'll be with you in a moment. I'm sure the girls would like to see the doll display while they're waiting. Well, fine. Thank you. Mr. Franz catch you. He's very particular about these dolls. Nobody's allowed to touch them. Come on, let's look at the other dolls. Hmm. like my dolls? Oh, I, I think they're lovely. Do you really? You must meet some of them. My dolls are fashioned from all walks of life. Now, here's a bride. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> and uh, over here, now, let me see. <clears throat> Here's a housewife going shopping. <laughs> and here, oh my, yes, she's very important. This is my nurse. She helps to keep my little people well. Wouldn't do for anything to happen to them, would it, nurse? You treat them like real people. Well, but of course, they're my friends. My name is Franz. What's yours, my dear? Sally Reynolds. You came about my ad, I suppose. Yes, but I... Don't think I'm the girl for the job. Oh, wait, please. Let me be the judge, hmm? Uh, how much experience have you had? Very little. I, I worked a year in a college bookstore, that's all. You married? No. Live with your family? I haven't any family. I'm on my own. I'm sure there's somebody else that's better qualified. No, you're exactly the one I want, Miss Reynolds. I'd like you to start right away. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But just answer the telephone and take care of my accounts and my correspondence. As you can see, I'm no good at paperwork. I'm sorry, Mr. Franz. I, I couldn't. I have no one to help me with my dolls. I, I work alone. I need someone in the office. 
Whatever you do, your work will be satisfactory, my dear, and I, I pay the usual wages, but if that isn't enough, I could manage a little more. Won't you please try it just for a day or two? Dolls Incorporated. One moment, please. A Mr. Grant for you. I'll take it in the back room. Yes, Mr. Grant. I understand you had a secretary named Janet Hall. Uh, yes, Miss Hall used to work for me. Have you any idea where I can reach her? Well, she left last week. She was going to take a better position with Pathé. You might try to reach her there. This is Pathé, and she never showed up. If you see her, will you ever get in touch with me? I'd be glad to, Mr. Grant. I'll make a note of it right away. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who is it? It's Sally. Mr. Franz, if I'm to work for you, I'll need the cash ledger. Can you tell me where it is? Oh, I'm afraid I don't know. Uh, Janet took such good care of things. I, uh, I'll be right out and help you look for it. My name is Sally. I work for Mr. Franz. Oh, since when? Six weeks ago. Do you have business with Mr. Franz? I sure do. I'm Bob Wesley, the best salesman in St. Louis. Well, he can't be disturbed right now. You may wait or perhaps come back later. The least you can do is tell him I'm here. But I'm sorry, he just can't be disturbed. <laughs> He's not in the factory. Now, are you going to tell me where he is? me into trouble. Mr. Franz is in the back room, and when he's in that room, he never wants to be disturbed. All right, all right. Don't get excited. But can't you send up some smoke signals or something? Call him on the phone. He'd be furious. Mr. Franz furious? Well, they don't come any milder than him. Say, are you afraid of him? Please, I've got work to do, and if you'll excuse me, I'll be able to do it. Look, let's start all over again. I apologize. I don't want to get you into any trouble, and I want to be friends. Okay? Okay. All right, now that we're friends, tell me the truth. Are you afraid of your boss? No, I'm not afraid of him. Well, maybe just a little. He does get a little peculiar at times. What time? When he talks to them, he's so serious. It's almost as if he expected them to talk back. Who? Why, the dolls, of course. The do <laughs> Wait just a minute. Morning, Sally. Been dreaming up anything new about the boss? Dolls Incorporated. It's on the fifth floor. Second floor. Well, I can take the letter. I work there. Are you Miss Hall? Uh, no. Well, it's registered. Someone will have to sign for it. Uh, maybe you better see Mr. Franz about it. Third floor. You another new man? Seems we just got one lately. I'm special delivery. Fourth floor. Whatever happened to that friendly fellow who brought the mail around here for so long? You mean old Ernie? The funny thing, 
Two days before he was to retire and get a pension, he disappeared. Yes, sir. Started out one morning with his mail sack and never came back. Yes, Miss Reynolds. I'll be right out and sign for it. Bob, good morning. I'm sorry I don't know Miss Hall's new address, but I expect her to stop by in a day or two. I'll see she gets this. Thank you. Come on in, Bob. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. I'll be right with you, Bob. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Price doesn't seem too out of line. I'll take four gross of that. What do you like, my dear? Oh, this one here. The white organdy with the blue ribbons. Oh, uh, it's a pity you can't model it for us. Though I can see it will be very becoming on you. Yes. Well, two gross of the strapless organdy and two of the negligee. How about lingerie to go with it? Yes, you can put that in, too. When can you deliver them? Uh, ten days. Is that all right? Yes. Will that be all, Mr. Franz? Uh, do you mind if I keep this uh, strapless organdy? You can charge it to my order. I think that'll be all right. Thank you, Mr. Franz. Thank you, miss. Here, let me get rid of some of this stuff for you. Miss Reynolds, I don't know what I'd ever do without you. Yes, Miss Reynolds. Who? No. By all means, tell him I'll be right there. An old friend out of the past is here to see me. Shall we call it a day? I, I'd have to stop soon anyway to mix more plastic, so you'll forgive me, won't you? Certainly, sir. I didn't even know you were in this part of the world. I arrived yesterday. Yeah, with your puppet. Why, of course, ah, of ah, course. Ah. My puppets open their show next Monday. And listen, Frank, I should like you very much to come to the theater and meet them. Huh? Of course, I should be happy to. Good. How did you ever find me? Well, I thought I did the services of a, a marionette maker when I was here. So I opened the directory, and there was your name. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's been a long time, Frank. No more show business, sir. Huh? No, no, I gave that up. I just have dolls now. Dolls, eh? Many, many dolls, as well, you can see. As long as you enjoy it. Tell me, how, how's your dear Emma? Emma. 
Emma. Emma, the girl with the beautiful golden hair, your wife. I have tried so long to forget that name, I sometimes almost succeed. She left me. When did this happen? My marionettes were playing in Luxembourg, and um, she ran away with someone she liked better, an acrobat. Acro oh, how that must have hurt. How that must have hurt, Franz. But I'm happy now at any rate, and that's what counts. Yes, hmm? sir. Amy, let me take you to dinner. Why not? Why not? And we'll have time to stop at the theater and... Visit your marionette. That's an excellent idea, Franz. So, let us go. And uh, wait till you meet my little puppets. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Excellent, Franz. Excellent. You know, I haven't seen a performance like that in, in ages. Well, well, well. This is like the good old days again, huh, Franz? <laughs> ah, you were once the best in our profession. And you still could be if you wanted to. Well, you see, things have been getting too much for me lately, and I've been thinking of a partner. What about joining me? Hmm? It doesn't interest me. Why not? Because my marionettes are getting old and need attention. Oh, I don't mind repairing them. It isn't that. What is it, then? I am content in my doll factory. Isn't it time we ate? <laughs> Do you know what's wrong with you, my friend? Hmm? Why must someone who is content with things the way they are always have something wrong with him? Contentment is unnatural. <laughs> Emmy's leaving you must have done you a great deal of harm, my boy. You think so? You've run away from life. You've surrounded yourself with all shapes of people, with their faces, their, their legs, their arms, even little mannequins of them. But not their spirit, you're afraid of that. Well, I found peace anyhow. Oh. Well, at last. I have no fear it won't. I love my dolls, and I'm quite sure they'll never leave me. Let's forget about the past, Emil, and have a good time. Hmm? Living in the present is the only important thing. And then, after dinner, we'll go back to my shop, huh? Excellent idea. How about that? show for any particular reason? Oh, I get tired of the same things all the time. Don't you? Yes, I do. Such as what? Dolls. Why don't you ask me what it feels like to be a freak? Please, sir, I... This is how it feels to be so big you can stick your fist through a circus top. Like a clown. Mr. Friend said you were going back to St. Louis tomorrow. Maybe. It's adjustable. I can grow to be a hundred feet tall, and I don't need a change of wardrobe. How'd you like to come with me? What would I do in St. Louis? Live in a pretty little house. Become Mrs. Bob Wesley. Man lives through plutonium blast. <laughs> That's a great joke, isn't it, Sergeant? <laughs> Why do you think I've been hanging around all these weeks? What do you say? I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. You want to go back to your quarters and tell your friends about the monster? About the circus freak? Well, that's right, Sergeant. I'm a circus freak. Have a tent. We'll travel. Why don't you make me up a sign saying, See the amazing colossal man. Hey, I got a terrific idea. What do you say we fly to Las Vegas tomorrow and get married? 
I couldn't leave without telling Mr. Franz I'm going. Well, let me tell him. I'll see him first thing in the morning. You get packed and be ready, and I'll pick you up at 10 o'clock. How's that? Wonderful. I'm not growing. You're shrinking. anything the matter? When you didn't come to the office this morning, I began to worry. Well, hasn't Mr. Wesley been to see you? Yes, he was here earlier, but he's left. Where did he go? Back to St. Louis, I believe. Miss Reynolds. Miss Reynolds. Are you all right? Yes. Can I expect you at the office this morning? Yes, I'll, I'll be there. All right. Ah, there you are. Now things are as they should be. Uh, by the way, I left the bill for those St. Louis shipments on your desk. I'll see to them right away. Mr. Franz? Did Bob go by air? No, by train. I believe he had his ticket already. It was very sudden. Well, he'd been neglecting his business lately. It probably caught up with him. Didn't he tell you anything about me? Yes, of course he did. He told me that he'd asked you to marry him and that you had consented. When's it to be? He didn't. I, I mean, we haven't set the date. Bob gave me to understand that you wouldn't work for me after you were married. I begged him not to take you away. I told him how sad it is when people go. <laughs> oh, my dear, I didn't mean to make you unhappy. Is it because he didn't come and say goodbye? Well, that wasn't very thoughtful of him. Will you listen to an old friend? Perhaps it would be better if you tried to forget him. I don't know what to think. That's not true. I, I do know. Bob wouldn't treat me this way if he could help.
Pardon me. Can you tell me where Sergeant Patterson is? Thank you. Sergeant Patterson? Yes. I'm Sally Reynolds. The man at the desk sent me to see you. Oh, yes. Sit down, Miss Reynolds. Oh, here it is. You say in this report you made downstairs that your fiancé disappeared mysteriously. Just what does that mean? Something Mr. Franz did to him. Such as? Well, Mr. Franz did something to him. Well, you said that. Well, I, I don't know how else to put it. Did he hit him? Did he shoot him? Did he strangle him? No, he... You won't believe me. Well, that's my business. Now tell me, just what did he do? He made Bob into a doll. He made your fiancé into a doll. I see. Well, we'll let you know if we learn anything, Miss Reynolds. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Look, suppose there were some other people that, that disappeared the same way. Would you do something then? Well, that all depends. Who were they? Janet Hall. Anyone else? A mailman named Journey. Ernie Larson. Go on. Well, isn't that enough? I guess it is. Okay, let's go and see this, Mr. Franz. He's taken Bob down. He must have him inside. Is this the man? Yes. Young lady says you've been making people disappear mysteriously, turning them into dolls. Why, Miss Reynolds, what made you say such a thing? It was perfectly ridiculous. Is that Wesley? How come it looks just like her boyfriend? I model all my dolls after people I know and like. And people I like to have near me. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? May I see it, please? Certainly. It's lifelike, all right. Well, I should hope so. But I assure you, it's only a doll. Being in this place another minute. It's locked. Open the door, it's locked.
be careful, my dear. Well, surely you aren't afraid of me, are you? Why, I'm your friend. Oh, you mustn't feel bad, Miss Reynolds. It's time for you to put on your new clothes. You don't want to meet your fiancé dressed in nothing but a napkin, do you? Here they are. First your toilet articles. And your stockings. And the dress. Oh, it's very pretty, isn't it? You remember you selected this yourself. Now you want to make yourself look nice. I'm sure you're going to meet Bob. Shall I help you? That's better. Only sleep, Miss Reynolds. What you might call a state of suspended animation. Bob! Bob! Oh, be patient. He'll be with you in a minute. This fresh air will revive him in no time. I enjoy these little reunions. You funny little people. I wonder why it is you always hate me so at first. I haven't really harmed you. Get the best of care. I never let you get too warm or too cold, too hungry or too tired. You should be grateful. Think. No daily grind, no budget problems, no taxes or debts or family to support. I see to everything. And it's never dull. You sleep away the long, boring hours and your jars, and when I take you out to wake you, it's, it's only to have fun to enjoy some new treat I've thought up for you. Don't you see how fortunate you are? You have nothing to do all the rest of your little lives but be happy. That's what you think. Change it back the way we were. I like you better the way you are. Are you going to keep us this size? Always. What have you done to us? Would you really like to know? It's my secret, but I don't think you'll give me away. It's a very simple principle, really. Notice how this slide projector throws a visual image. I can make it any size I choose. When I push it closer to the wall, the picture becomes smaller. Being of an inquiring mind, I asked myself one day if I couldn't do the same with living things. I reasoned that if I could pass them through a device similar in principle to this slide projector, then I would be able to project these living things to any size that I would choose. This is the answer I found. Here, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. To project a complex molecular structure, such as a man or, uh, say, a cat, 
It's only necessary to change him into energy first, much as the light in that slide projector. I soon found out that the most practical way of causing this change was to break down the molecular structure by means of high frequency vibration. Now with this tuning fork, I will set up a sonic vibration. Just as the glass disintegrated to the resonant frequency sent out by this tuning fork, so will a living thing disintegrate to its resonant frequency. Of course, it's a much higher frequency. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Oh. Now, watch this. All right, Kitty, there's something for you. Tommy, Miss Reynolds, he always liked you. Take him. Being so small, he may feel strange at first. Pet him. I must go and get some of the other little people who live with me. I want them to meet you. Hello, big boy. Who's your friend? Miss Reynolds, may I introduce Miss Lane? Call me Georgia. They all do. Glad to meet you, Sally. Welcome to the toy department. Hi, kid. This is Lori. She's a swell kid. Lori, meet Bob and Sally. How are you? Hello. Gosh, I'm awfully sleepy. How long did he put me away this time? Well, for a couple of months, anyhow. Oh, say, you missed a lot of fun. We had a picnic and a flower box, two dances, and a moonlight swimming party in the sink. And all because I wouldn't sing for him. Oh. Hi, Lori. Long time no see. <laughs> hi, everybody. Well, hi, Stan. Say hello to Bob and Sally. And if it isn't Mad Pride of the Marine Corps, that me, Bob and Sally. Well, welcome, stranger. Hey, the old friends are learning how to pick them better all the time. Hey, when are we going to get this party rolling? Yeah, let's go. What are we waiting for, big boy? We got a new arrival here to celebrate. I have some refreshments for our little party. 
a petit four, a knife to cut it with, some tiny little cups and saucers, and a miniature bottle of champagne. Please help yourselves. I'm afraid I'm a little too clumsy to serve my guests when they're as small as you. There's quite a bit of this bit bubbly here. Bubbly. 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 girls. Oh, boy. Here's a cake for you. Oh, up long oh, on my, boy. <laughs> on my left. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a toast to the uh, new members of the family, Sally and Bob. Are you two engaged? Say, when's the wedding going to be? You better ask him. Poor Bob and Sally. There's no one your size who can marry you. I'll have to see what I can do about it sometime. Stop! All of you, stop! How can you be so calm? Go for help, run, do something, anything but this. Say, what's the matter with her anyway? I got used to the size in about ten minutes. And believe me, brother, I kind of like it. I never had it so easy in my life. Look at it this way, Sally. We're in a jam, and there's nothing to do but make the best of it. Uh, for the time being, anyway. I know how she feels. I took it pretty hard, too. But we sometimes have to do things we don't want to just to have some freedom like this. Listen, he drops a capsule in your jar. It puts you to sleep. Don't breathe any Watch out, everybody. He's coming oh, back. sing for us. No, I don't want to sing. But you will, my dear, or back in the bottle you go. You're a dolly. You're a dolly. You're so cute and lovely, dearest little doll. Say you want me to be near you, to be yours forevermore, my little doll. You're so precious. You're so darling. You are all that I could want to live and die. Stay with me forevermore, my living dog. Yes? I was passing by and saw the light in your window. I thought you might be lonesome, so I dropped in, you mind? That was kind of you, Emil. Tell me, uh, how did your opening night go? Uh, France, wonderful. Wonderful. Come and sit down. I'll tell you all about uh, it. Uh, let me put things oh, away. Oh, huh? but it'll only take one minute. But uh, you, you must hear what happened last night. Come, sit down, will you? First of all, everybody was there. But but everybody. He's got somebody outside. Telephone. Uh, the police. Does anyone know the number? I should remember. I called him just yesterday. Wait. 
department. Police department. We're at Dolls Incorporated. Fifth floor, Tilford Building. Please hurry. Police department. Anybody on this line? Oh, he can't hear me. It's the music. Well, if we stop it, Franz is sure to come back. Tilford Building. Fifth floor, Dolls Incorporated. Anybody on this line? Hey, help! 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 Hey, help! 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 Oh, what's the use? Nobody can hear little people like us. It's awful when you think there are people all around us and we can't even get through to them. And then, right after the first act, who do you suppose? Yes, yes, I, Emil, I simply have oh, to go wait now. Wait a minute, Franz. Wait, you don't know who came backstage to congratulate me. But just a minute, I have to take care of the record player. Ah, there you see. The record player takes care of himself. Now, come on. Come on, let me finish it. Franz, listen. I tell you, it was like the good old days in Brussels. Now, will you guess the name of the party who came backstage? Come on, try it, try it. I can't guess. You tell me. The machine. I was wondering if we couldn't go through it the other way and come out our right sides again. He said it works like a projector. I'll bet I could figure out the controls. It may not be a good idea to fool with you. You might get killed. I don't care. I'm willing to risk it. I am too. Who wouldn't be? Oh, one's enough. It only takes one of us to go for help. Shall we try it? Yeah. yeah. Why don't we do it? No, no, no. Hold it, you living dolls. But I was one of his first puppets, so I deserve the right to be the guinea pig. Okay? All right, Mac. If that's the way you want it. But you know what can happen if I make a mistake. Come on, let's go. Well, if it does work, you're going to need some clothes. Now, I'm pretty sure he keeps our old ones in that closet. That's right. I saw him hang mine up over there. Oh, well, come on. Let's go. You three girls better stay up here. I'll work the controls. Stan, you go over to the door and keep an eye out for Franz. Just a minute. I said to myself, I said, at last, I'm being appreciated. Oh, how could a wept for happiness, Rod? And I am happy for you. May I go now? Oh, well, I shouldn't detain you like this, should I? You go on and... You see, I have to be alone in this kind of work I'm doing. You, you understand? 
Hold it! Why don't you go on and do what you have to do, and I'll talk to you while you work. No, no, I'd rather give you my undivided attention, old friend. So tell me what happened then. Very well. I'll tell you. Okay. I could. Well, lunch tomorrow then, huh? Certainly. Yes. If I call for you about noon. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I suppose there's nothing more for us to say but good night, huh? Let's be bold and get it over with. Good night. Good night. Had enough fun for tonight. Come to bed quickly now, it's time. Sergeant, how are you? Fine, Mr. Brands. You don't mind if I go on with my work, do you? I'm short-handed and I've fallen way behind. I notice you're advertising for another secretary. Yes, it's quite a problem keeping help these days. How'd you happen to lose Sally Reynolds? She went to St. Louis, I believe. Her fiancé lives there, you know. Well, I could have saved him the trip. Why, have you news of him? Well, he didn't show up at home. And we've been asked to do some more checking on him here. How strange. What do you suppose could have become of him? Well, that's what I came to ask you. Can you fix my dolly? Will you excuse me? Go ahead. Take care of your customer. I'll just look around. Well, let's see what we can do for you. Tell me, what's your dolly's name? Susie. She got run over. Oh, dear, dear, dear. How did that happen? She ran out in the street while I wasn't looking. That wasn't nice of her, was it? She's a bad dog. You know, you ought to spank her when she disobeys. I do, but it doesn't seem to do any good. <laughs> Are your dollies like that? Well, they do get rather headstrong sometimes. Mr. Franz, what's in here? Oh, uh, just a workroom. Oh, may I see it, please? Oh, there's nothing there that would interest you, Sergeant. I go there whenever I'm lonely. I would like to see it. Can I have the key, please? Thank you. Do 
left so many dollars. They must give you a lot of trouble. Yes, but then I... I never get lonely, and that makes up for it. Oh, look. Isn't that cute? Can I have it? Uh, no, dear, no, no. Please, why not? Well, everybody'd want to know where you got it. Uh, you know, grown-ups ask so many awkward questions. Now, you better give it to me. Don't take it away from me. I want it. What do you call this thing in here? You can play with it till I get back. Uh... Oh, that. Well, what's it look like to you? <laughs> You've got me. You know what a photographic enlarger is, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, this works just the opposite. I use it to make models of people. Wouldn't you like to see how it works? Uh, some other time. I've got to be running along. Well, what you got there, little girl? Let's see. Tape recording inside. Do you like it? Uh huh. Can I have it? No, but you can come and play with it any time you like. And the cat? Yes, that too. Oh, about those missing people. I'll be checking with you later. I do hope you find them soon, Sergeant. Thank you. Bye, honey. Bye. Now, to fix your dolly. <laughs> this is one of the best puppets you ever had, Emil. It's one of the best Jekyll and Hyde ever was. It was made by Schwartz back in the good old days in Prague. But uh -huh. the funny thing, every time the cube comes for Jekyll to change him to Hyde, see, <laughs> nothing happens. Did you bring me back here at this late hour because your star puppet was a little temperamental? Please, Franz, please understand my predicament. There are only three people in the whole world I could trust to cure him. Well, Mariani, who's in Milan. Oriak, well, he's in Paris. And you. You know perfectly well I never could resist flattery. <laughs> How much time can I have to work on him? Well, you see, we have a matinee tomorrow, too. It'd be tragic to return all that money for the tickets. Can you have them ready that soon? I'll try it, even if it takes me all night. Right. And uh, one more thing. Uh, how much is this going to cost? Oh, nothing. That's the least I can do for an old friend. Ah, thank you, thank you. May a dear old friend ask you something of a personal nature? Certainly. Now, what are you up to that brings the police over to ask me all sorts of questions? When was this? This afternoon. Police sergeant named uh, Patterson. He comes to my hotel room, and <laughs> it sounds fantastic. He asked me whether you were in the habit of making people disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you told him I do it all the time. Oh, but seriously, it's bad business to have police pry into your affairs. Emil, I'm quite serious. If I thought I were being watched, I would find life intolerable. Now, be a good fellow, will you, and tell the night doorman to let me in the theater later. I'll have to give Mr. Hyde a tryout when he's finished. I'll run along now. I'll do it on my way home. I don't suppose I have to tell you how grateful I am to your friend. Oh, nonsense. Uh -huh. Good night, Emil. And goodbye.
sorry you're awake, Miss Reynolds. It makes everything much more difficult. What are you going to do? The police have been asking my friend Emil questions. They're getting uncomfortably close. That leaves me only one course. You'll free us, won't you? You'll make us our right size again. You'll be deprived of your company. Oh, no, I couldn't let that happen. Can't you see it? It's better that we all bow out together. Oh, please, don't be frightened. Can't you see, it's much better that we all meet death together than for any one of us to be left alone. There's nothing worse than loneliness. Wait. Wait, I have a splendid idea. Yes, yes, we'll have a going away party for all of us. A celebration. My friend Emil asked me to fix his puppet and leave it at the theater. We'll have our party there. A theater party. Now, let's all get ready. like they're going out of style. And tonight's a theater party, no less. You better enjoy it, Georgia, as it may be our last. What are you talking about? Sally. Tell her. He said that tonight... He said tonight he was going to kill us all. Himself, too. You better hurry up and dress. We'll tell the boys. Just my old size for five minutes. Hey, let's try the telephone again. There's no music now. Maybe they'll hear us. Yeah, sure. So with Franz. He's just outside the door. Hey, the window. Slightly open. Maybe we could signal somebody. Sure we can. We're only five stories up. Hey, here's some paper. Somebody get something to write with. Glory, keep an eye out for Franz. That's all dried up. Hey, how about using some of this lipstick? Hey, here's a pencil. Hey, that's great. Bring it all over. Yeah, man. Let's see now. All right, uh, help. Send police. Yeah. to the theater. I think that'd be a nice treat. Of course, you won't be able to see out the window, but I don't think you'll mind that little inconvenience. At least you'll be able to hear what the city sounds like at night, because this time I shan't put you to sleep. You've been very good. This is your reward.
You all right, Mr. Prince? Yes, yes, fine. Not a lonesome in the theater with nobody around? Not to me. I have my puppets to keep me company. But you've been at it all night. I thought maybe I could get you some more coffee. No, no more coffee. I still have plenty. Don't come on the stage. All right, all right. No more coffee. Probably slowing down some. Where'd you get it? The last time he put us away. Now then, I think our puppet friend, Dr. Jekyll, is ready for a trial. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Jekyll. I have discovered a strange drug that is able to free my evil nature from what is good in me. Then I become the sinister monster, Mr. Hyde. With the assistance of a few members of our audience, I should like to put on one of the scenes from our little play. Which one of you will volunteer? Come now, we mustn't keep Dr. Jekyll waiting. Miss Reynolds, you will play the good doctor's fiancée. Georgia, you will be his victim, and uh, now let me see for Dr. Jekyll's best friend. Yes, Bob, you should be very good in the part. The rest of you just sit back and enjoy yourselves. All right, you're on now, Miss Reynolds. I'll prompt you on what to do. Go ahead, darling. But keep his eyes off the coffee cup. Tell him he's been strange lately and ask him what's the matter. You've been strange lately. Tell me what's the matter. Nothing, my dear. Nothing at all. It's only your imagination. You must play up to him, Miss Reynolds. Remember you love him. Say so. Tell him he can trust you. You know I love you. Why can't you be kind to me? No more convincing, dear. Try it again. You know I love you. Why can't you be kind to me? That's it, my dear. That's it. Things are different now. They can never be changed back again. Perhaps it would be best if we stopped seeing one another. There is danger here for you, and I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Ask him to confide in you. Why, why won't you tell me what's wrong? I have traveled the road of no return. There is no going back. Only death can free me from the curse I have put upon myself. Boy, you're more of a fiend than I thought. If you're gonna kill us, get it over with. Cut out this cat and mouse game. Bob, don't ruin our last act. Look at this puppet down here, friends. Look at it closely. It's a monster, all right. But not half the monster you are. No, oh, stop it, Bob. The puppet. You're destroying the puppet. <laughs> I tell you, stop it! Ah! Who's there? Me again. Don't come on the stage. I thought I told you I don't want to be disturbed. Well, I heard you shouting. I thought... You thought what? Maybe you want some more coffee. No, no, your coffee's fine and I still have plenty. Bob, Miss Reynolds, where have you run to? Uh, where are you hiding? Where are you? Don't run away from me. Come 
it's time for us to go. Who are you talking to, anyway? Haven't you ever heard a ventriloquist practice throwing his voice? Nearby. It's 5.30 in the morning. Most people are in bed now. Oh, it's hopeless. Let's try to get back to Fran's place in the machine. If we make it, we can go back for the others. It's this way. Second in May. And we have to go to 7th and Hill. How far is it? About a mile, I think. When we're our size, that's the equivalent of six miles. How can we ever make it, Bob? Well, we're not going to make it standing here. Come on. Who are you looking for? Did you see them leave? Them? Who? But never mind. an hour. We can't operate it ourselves. Hey, what about freight? What do you mean? Well, there must be a freight elevator around back. When do they make deliveries? Oh, I don't know. Shipments usually come in before I get to work. Hey, we're in luck. You left the doors open. Fran's in? Let me try. Well, it looks like we both missed him, doesn't it? You like him, don't you? Because he makes dollies? And people, too. People? Little people. He makes little people, does he? How? 
are the big ones with the machine. Real little people? People that walk and talk and everything? How do you know? Mr. Fat showed me. He said sometimes when I'm good, I could play with them. Oh, she isn't here to let you play with them, and that's why you're unhappy, huh? He said I could play with his kitty. Ooh, a kitty. A little tiny kitty. Mr. Fant keeps it in a matchbox. He made it in his machine. I see. Isn't it time you were going to school? Well, come on, I'm going to take you there. Little people. Cat in a matchbox, huh? <laughs> come on. Don't leave me. I'll be alone. 